Hello everyone and welcome back. I apologize for the delay in the video. I've been sick for like two weeks with that cough that everybody has. So I didn't really want to talk. Unfortunately, the internet has not been working at the office. So it's been a fun, you know, one two punch. Anyway, as you can see from that case, a little bit of infection here. This is a guy who came in with severe swelling, a ton of pain. And because I had the gentle wave, it was uh, allowed me to finish this case in one visit and actually feel comfortable that it was going to be okay, which is super cool. So first thing is always take out the bite, just kind of lower it down a little bit. And we're gonna go ahead and access through as you can see from the pre-op, this was a Emax lithium disilicate, so got to access through that. That's where those purple diamonds are really useful as well. Now, the patient had been on antibiotics for, I think, a few days beforehand, so the swelling had definitely decreased, but he was still in a large amount of pain and took a little bit of time to get him numb as well. So access here... Um, when you learn how to access Gentle Wave initially, at least back when I learned a few years ago, they wanted you to be a decent size, so about two, two and a half millimeters. And based on what I've seen with this new clean flow, the, the, um, similar to the anterior one, if you're familiar with that from back in the day, you do not have to remove quite as much tooth structure and you don't have to open it up quite as much. So there's a couple ways you can get around that I'll show, but there are some cool things you can do to make it better. So that's going to be the access. I don't think I really do too, too much more here as far as uh, widening it or anything like that. But uh, I do have to go you know, inside the actual canal. I wasn't able to pick up that distal, but the, the hole on top of the tooth is going to be right about that one and a half ish size. So a uh, very conservative here. And thankfully, because of this machine, I'm able to feel comfortable doing this in one visit, whereas before it would be two. Um, I'll, I'll post a video here soon talking about I'm, a, I'm about a month of having the machine at this point. So definitely want to post a video kind of about my thoughts this early on and what we've um, what I've learned, where it's useful, where it's not useful. Too long, didn't read version of it is it's been a lot more useful than I thought. I'm going through a lot more hand pieces than anticipated and using it on a lot more cases as well, which is all a good thing. Um, I spent a lot of money on it, so I'm, I'm happy to say that it's been worth the investment here. So sorry this angle isn't great. Sometimes when you're working through these really small accesses, it uh, the the I can see more than the camera can because when you look through a microscope, what you see is actually a circle and I can see stuff on the edge of it. And sometimes I forget when I'm <laughs> recording that I need to reposition. So sorry that you can't really see as much as you would normally. But with all of the, this is why I don't do a ton of cases that are these, you know, super small axes. It's, it's, it doesn't make for a very good video because you can't see too much. However, I thought because of this case and because of um, some unique things about it. I think it's worth showing. When I do the gentle wave, I do a couple things differently. Number one, I'm not really getting length here. And I still want to take at least the 2006 about a half, if not two thirds down. Sometimes like the 17 down. Sometimes I will get length. But in general, you do not have to do as much. And so I haven't really cut out too, too much from the actual video here. This is pretty much real time. At about that three to let's say five minute mark, I am starting to build the platform. And that's where you get a lot of the savings as far as the time with the gentle wave is you can, I think a lot of people when this first came out thought of the machine as a great disinfecting tool. I think of it as doing a lot of the cleaning and shaping for me. So I use this almost in place of other rotary files. So one one kind of mindset shift to think about when you're doing it. You'll notice when I'm building platforms, and if you're interested in a video on platforms, I will totally you know put one together. But what um, I kind of do here is I will seal along the rubber dam to make sure that if there is any leakage, it doesn't go into the mouth. Even if you have a perfect platform, you're still going to get spray from the back of the gentle wave unit itself. So you want that to be nice and sealed. One thing you see me struggling with here is the rubber dam is a little too far forward. So one thing I've changed up a little bit here is either clamping farther behind. I'm also looking into a couple different clamps. I'll, I'll report back once I've tried them out on a few cases that are supposed to work better and give you a little more space to play with. One thing I always recommend, though, is taking the glick and smoothing that off, creating a little bit more of a stable surface. This was a trick I developed back when I used it at another office a few years ago. And it makes a significant difference in the stability of the platform, not necessarily the ability of the platform to seal, but you don't have to use quite as much of the sound seal and you still get that stability because when you're pushing on this, even though I'll, I'll show a couple cases here where I, I can actually on certain premolars, I can angle it to where I don't even have to hold the handpiece while it's running. The suction from the unit is enough on molars. Generally, I haven't been able to. 
I keep trying. <laughs> I'll let you know if I figure out a trick. Um, but on mullers, you still have to have a, a fair amount of pressure on the device itself to make sure it's well sealed. Always light cure after to make sure that air inhibited area is good. Um, and then this is going to be uh, 26 times speed <laughs> running through the cycle here. Um, there's not much to see here because it's going so fast. Hopefully the when it processes, it'll look a lot better. As I'm recording this and watching it, my computer is struggling massively to get a video that actually looks good. So I'm interested to see what this final one looks like. But after about eight minutes or so, we're going to go ahead and stop it here, pop it off, and go from there. Um, you can use whatever you want to remove that. But once it's off, uh, th this is not sped up. This is how fast the actual speed is. The obturation process is pretty darn quick. Um, I'll take the suction in there, remove any of the water that they use for that final rinse, and from here on out, it's squirt fill time. It's peanut butter jelly time! Peanut butter jelly time! This is one of the really big benefits of the squirt fill. I don't need to know the exact working length because the gutta percha is going to go to the area that it needs to go. Now, we've talked about the squirt fill in this channel a lot, and you do have to be careful with one step in cases, especially if there's a large apical finding, because you can't rely on that back pressure as much as you could with, say, a vital case. However, this, I think, is one of the most ideal circumstances for the squirt fill is you don't need to spend that extra time getting the true and accurate length of the apex locator because you can get close enough with the cone beam that when you go to do the actual obturation, it works out very, very nicely. You'll see at the end here. I'm pleased with how this one turned out. So age plus for this, um, I know a lot of gentle wave guys are using and gals are using um, the BC sealer and that works great, but you do have to get a more accurate length. And I found that those cones can be, especially with these really, really tiny sizes here, it can be a little bit off. One thing, if you are going to do this, make sure, this is why I kept this in, even though all you can see is my hand. What I'm doing here is recapitulating with the 20K file to the approximate working length on the cone beam. Uh, notice I did not take the 2006 all the way down to about 20 millimeters, which is what the working length was on this. But I am taking that 20K file. It's very, very important that you recapitulate with either a 15 or 20K file at the end of the procedure to make sure that you have a really nice solid path for everything to go down and you'll find even on cases where it's really calcified or if you've struggled getting rotary files down oftentimes the gentle wave will remove a much enough crap that you can actually get the file to go to length pretty straightforwardly it, it's very interesting it's it's been um you know like i guess i use this for about a year and a half at another office and really enjoyed it um and I thought my, like, I guess I'm getting into the next video, <laughs> but I thought my patient population would be such that I wouldn't have as much use for it. And it turns out I'm, I'm using it multiple times a day now. So it, it has definitely been worth the investment. So the squirt technique here, there's really not too, too much different, uh, difference as far as obturating a gentle wave case versus a traditional case. The only thing here is on that distal. I didn't quite push down quite as hard or as far. And sometimes I will wait to do the x-ray until I use the pack mac just to make sure I'm not extruding any material at the apex of the tooth because we don't want that obviously so um, I think in this case we'll see here in just a second I do all these live and unfortunately I, I recorded a lot of these way back when <laughs> okay I did not do the pack mac until after the x-ray so one trick here with a emax lithium silicate or pfms you want to use hydrofluoric acid as an etching material to make sure that you etch the porcelain so you have something to bond to. In this case, I didn't have to do the pack mac at all, which is always nice. And, you know, if you've ever, <laughs> uh, the number of times I've seen videos of people where they, you know, they, they're, they're doing even phosphoric acid etch and they won't wait 15 seconds. I'm the type where I will try to count to 60 for the hydrofluoric acid etch, but I found I'm more predictable of placing it. The rubber dam stays on when we do the x-ray and it takes about a minute to do the x-ray anyway. And that gives the acid time to actually do its job. <laughs> so makes a difference here. I was always curious, would there be, would the disclosing solution show any biofilm still present in the access? And it has been a lot less than I thought, but there is still some debris present. So you'll notice I'm still using the blaster to kind of clean everything off. Um, I was, wasn't sure what that was going to be like having, you know, used this system now for a couple of years. I wasn't sure how the general way was going to change it. It definitely removes more bacteria than the other options, but there is bacteria everywhere, no matter. It doesn't matter. Like 
they, they can show SEMs. There, there's still bacteria inside this tooth, even after the eight minutes. It, it, there will always be bacteria there. It's can you knock it down enough that the body can handle it and they're not going to come back and cause a problem. So you can see the pictures there as we get everything kind of looking good. Um, pretty straightforward case. I was able to keep the access nice and small, as you can see, and still have the confidence that because there was no drainage, even from a acute apical abscess, we're going to be okay mm -hmm. filling. Followed up with the patient uh, the day after, and he had no pain. That is the other cool, cool, cool thing that I have found with this gentle wave is your post-op pain is a lot less. It hasn't been studied because I'm not sure how you would study this, but it's been theorized that because the machine has such strong back pressure, it actually pulls out all the pro-inflammatory factors that are in the periapical region, and that leads to much lower post-operative pain rates. So that's the theory behind it. In practice, it's been pretty fantastic, actually. <laughs> uh, I've been I've been very pleased to see that. So just showing the uh, you know build up. I know some of you like to see this. Um, I'm interested to see. Uh, I have a few questions for some people out of some upcoming meetings. So this process might change for me. I'll, I'll let you know. But as of now, this was back in, gosh, this is actually back in December. It's been, I apologize. It's been a minute for me to get some of these cases out and there's, I have a backlog here, but they're all ready to go. I just, I'm, I'm here on my day off on a Friday. I could be skiing right now. And instead I'm standing in my office making videos for all of you. So that's how much I love all of you <laughs> is I could be up at the ski resort. And instead I'm here by myself sadly making YouTube videos. <laughs> like I said, that's pretty much it for this case. I thought it was cool because it shows one of the benefits of the gentle wave. And, and, you know, once again, fast forwarding to another video that I'll give. One of the reasons I decided to go ahead and purchase the machine was because I did a quick informal study and looked back of all the cases I did in the month of October and realized it would have a benefit in about 40% of the cases, you know, allowing me to finish a case in a single visit versus two. And I would have probably used it in about 67%. So pretty good here. Um, as far as the adjustments here, notice I'm adjusting that top because of the bull. We all know about that. <laughs> so that buckle on the upper was a little bit high. Even after me adjusting the tooth initially, you can see I'm mostly adjusting the top tooth. But that's what it looks like. Check out that cool anatomy, that little lateral coming through there. Um, and you can barely even tell we did anything to the final x-ray here. So I know you all like looking at the treatment time. This is one where the access was, like I said, right around that five minutes. It took about 12 minutes for me to build the platform and run the gentle wave. Obturation was pretty quick here. Like I said, there, there. Thankfully, this is doesn't take too too long, and then the restoration was about average for this case. So hopefully, that was an interesting case for everybody. I found it interesting because this was one where for sure I would not have done in a single visit without knowing that the gentle wave was going to clean things better for me. Um, because I, I've still had a few cases where the I wouldn't say failed, but the gentle wave has not been enough to completely dry the tooth and there are still been some cases where I've had to use some calcium hydroxide in them. However, this one was one where I was very pleasantly surprised to see that I was able to you know, save the patient a visit. He didn't have any um, adverse outcomes. I'll definitely be following up on this one with recalls. Uh, I'll update, you know, all of you probably just via, I won't make a video about it, but at least an update on here's where we are a year out or two out and just see how everything's healing up. So anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I apologize. It's been a minute. I'm about to go record yet another one after this. So hopefully we'll get some videos out here soon and I will talk to you all next time.